So good morning, everyone. What a beautiful sight. And you're probably thinking, I'm talking about what's behind me, that beautiful new facility. But, in addition to that site, what a great honor to look at this beautiful crowd and see so many familiar faces and your support for the veterans of the state of Alabama. So God bless you for being here today. It really is a beautiful sight to see all of you here. So I'm Kent Davis. I'm the Commissioner of the Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs. It is my real pleasure to welcome all of you to the Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins State Veterans Home Dedication Ceremony. At this time, I ask that everyone please stand for the posting of the colors by the Alabama National Guard Joint Service Color Guard. That will be followed by the singing of our national anthem by Sergeant First Class Deanna Lucchese. The Pledge of Allegiance by Ms. Carol Ann Toms, who is Chairwoman of the State Board of Veterans Affairs Homes Committee, and our invocation by U.S. Army Chaplain Sonny Moore. Post the colors. Sergeant Lucchese. And 
Chaplain Moore. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please join with me and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this historic day, this celebration for the dedication and of the Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins State Veterans Home. Father, we have looked forward to this day for a long time, and this is certainly the answer to many, many prayers. Father, we thank you for all our special guests here today, and really everybody here is special, but we give special thanks for the Gold Star families and especially for the Atkins family who are here today. Lord, we thank you for all the people who've had a part. No way to say thank you to everybody. But Lord, we do especially say, uh, pray your blessings on um, our, our governor, Kay Ivey, the Alabama Senate and the House. Uh, Lord, for Commissioner Kent Davis and his team, for the selection team that worked so hard and for Mayor Cooper and the City of Enterprise, for the Coffee County Commission, and then, Lord, for all the contractors, builders, and workers, so many who had a part, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, the Industrial Development Board, and many others. Father, thank you for all who had a part in making this day possible. As we open these doors today, and dedicate this building, we're grateful to live in a state and a nation that takes care of their veterans. And may we never forget. Lord, we pray your blessings on all the great veterans who will make this building their home in the days and years to come. We pray your blessings on the staff that will work and take care of our heroes. We owe them the very best love, care, and support that we can give them. Lord, most of all, we bow our heads today and we thank you, Lord, from whom all blessings flow. We ask and pray this, these things in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much, Chaplain Moore. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. So as Chaplain Moore mentioned, there are so many partners that were involved in this project. And I think all of us collectively sometimes wondered, would we ever get to this day? This has been seven years in the making to get to this day. But with us today, we have many of those partners and distinguished guests in the audience, and I'd like to recognize them. First and foremost, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if you're a veteran of the armed forces, and you're able, please stand to be recognized. Thank you so much, and I know it's a tried and true phrase, but God bless you and thank you for your service. This is what this day is all about those veterans across the state of Alabama and the service you and your families have provided. So bear with me, we have so many VIPs in the audience and I'm bound to miss someone or even uh, uh, get something wrong, people that might not have been able to show up, especially due to the weather. But um, as I call your name as a VIP, if you would please stand briefly so you can be recognized. And I know this is gonna be tough, but if you would, please hold your applause until the end, until we've recognized everyone. So I'll start with the Honorable Tommy Tuberville, United States Senate. Um, I believe Mr. John Ferguson, uh, the Regional Director for U.S. Senator Tommy Tuberville is here as well. Staff members from the office for the Honorable Katie Britt, United States Senate. Staff members from the Office of the Honorable Mike Rogers, United States House of Representatives. Staff members from the Office of the Honorable Barry Moore, United States House of Representatives. Thanks so much. Madam Deputy, Se Deputy Assistant Secretary Zanetta Adams, an old friend, Intergovernmental Affairs and Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs for the United States Department of Veterans Affairs and formerly was my counterpart in Michigan. 
as a state director. Staff members from the office of the Honorable Kay Ivey, Governor of Alabama. Your Honorable Greg Albritton, Alabama State Senator. Senator, it's so great to have you. The Honorable Andrew Jones, Alabama State Senator. Senator, it's so great to have you here. The Honorable Donnie Chessin, Alabama State Senator. Did he make it? Uh, the Honorable Josh Carnley, I think I saw him, Alabama State Senate. I know he's here too. The Honorable State Representative Kenneth Pascal, Alabama House of Representatives, District 73, and a fellow veteran. Representing the Adjutant General for the Alabama National Guard, Brigadier General Jeffrey Smith, Director of the Joint Staff. The Honorable William Cooper, Mayor of the City of Enterprise. Mr. Mayor, what a great partner the City of Enterprise has been. Members of the Enterprise City Council, the Coffee County Commission, and the Industrial Development Board of Enterprise, if you would please stand. Our keynote speaker, Medal of Honor recipient, and friend of Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins, Captain Retired Michael Rose. Mr. Scott Gedlin, Vice Chairman of the State Board of Veterans Affairs. You met her already, but Ms. Carol Ann Toms, Chairwoman of the State Board of Veterans Affairs Veterans Home Committee, and they have been involved in this seven-year project from the beginning. Members of the Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins extended family, please stand to be recognized. And folks, they came from all over the country to be here today to join this ceremony. That's one where a round of applause was appropriate. All right, so you have no idea for the past two years and more since we did groundbreaking, the efforts of the architects and engineers and the general contractor on this project, the effort that went into this beautiful site behind me. So I'd like to ask the team of the prime contractor for the construction of the home, Rayburn General Contractors, to please stand. There they are. And also from the project's architect and engineering firm, Williams Blackstock Architects, if you would please stand to be recognized. Kyle, Sean, Joel, everybody. Oh, wow, this is our cast of thousands. Great neighbors and great partners going forward. Distinguished guests from the United States Army Aviation Center of Excellence at Fort Novacell. We have joining us, among others, Major General Gill, the Commanding General of Fort Novacell, and Brigadier General Ken Cole, Deputy Commanding General. But if you're associated with Fort Novacell, please stand and be recognized. Thank you all for being here today. And Sergeant Lucchese, thanks for that great rendition of the national anthem. Great to see that uniform up here singing. All right, so you talked about the real work over the last seven years. There's one person I really want to recognize, Ms. Kim Justice, the Executive Director of the Alabama State Veterans Home System. Kim, please stand. So many of us get the honor of taking a little credit for this project, but you want to see someone who rolled their sleeves up over the past seven years to make this project happen. You could not ask for a better soldier, as we say, than Kim Justice. And I'd also like to introduce you to Ms. Samantha Wise, the new director of the Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkinson. Samantha. We also have joining us today additional members from the State Board of Veterans Affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd please stand and be recognized. SBVA members, there you go. Of course, I want to say a thanks again to uh, uh, Sergeant First Class Deanna Lucchese for singing the national anthem today. You've seen her, so Sergeant, you don't need to stand again. They know you by now. Uh, Chaplain Sonny Moore, thank you so much for providing our invocation. I would also like to recognize the veteran service organizations and members of the community in attendance today. And when I talk about partnership, you're gonna hear a recurring theme throughout 
the next few moments. This project would not have happened without the incredible daily contributions and partnership from local, state, and federal officials. And all those stories you hear about government agencies and feds and state and local not being able to partner and get along, look behind me. There's an example of what can happen when all of those entities work together. So, if, you are a, if you're a member of a veteran service organization, please stand and be recognized. Wow. I see some of our partners from the uh, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs and including the Deputy Assistant Secretary. So if you're with the federal VA, if you please stand and be recognized. Oh my gosh, y'all brought a lot of folks too. So this Russell here is the Acting Director of the Central Alabama Veterans Healthcare System and they are a, a direct partner with us in the operation of this new home. Uh, so to all of you, if I've missed any VIPs in the crowd, I sincerely apologize. As you can imagine, with the weather especially, people were coming and going. And I just noticed that I called the wrong person. It's Ms. Sheila Austin that's here from the federal VA, so I recognize you, Ms. Austin. Um, okay, if you would, please give a round of applause to everybody that's been recognized. <laughs> So I keep talking about partnership. I'm telling you, you could not ask for a better partnership than what we've seen from local officials. So it's my distinct pleasure to introduce the Honorable Mayor William Cooper to deliver remarks on behalf of the City of Enterprise. Mayor Cooper. Thank you, Admiral Davis. And as the little boy said when he walked up and looked out, wow! <laughs> it is an honor to be here today and to welcome you to Enterprise, the city of progress for the dedication ceremony of the Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins Veterans Home. As I look into the crowd, I see many familiar faces, champions for our veterans who helped bring this much needed facility to Coffee County. This took coordination and partnership on the local, state, and federal level. I want to thank the many leaders and community partners who offered their help, guidance, and encouragement during this process. Through construction might be complete, our work is far from being over. Studies indicate that enterprise in particular will see a significant growth in veterans' population in the coming years. Throughout the work of many dedicated individuals in our community, we are now able to meet and serve that need. This will be the Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs fifth skilled care nursing and memory care facility. Serving our veterans is both an honor and a privilege. More than 200 skilled workers will provide a nurturing environment where these men and women can truly feel at home. And in the spirit of hospitality, we welcome the new residents and veterans with open arms. We honor their service, we acknowledge their sacrifice, and we promise to do all we can to help them transition into this new state of art facility. Soon we will have an opportunity to go inside and tour the home. I hope you will take a moment to reflect on the men and women or think in terms of the, what this facility was named for. Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins is a hero. He deployed to Vietnam three times and distinguished himself during 38 hours of close combat fighting. 
he rushed through intense enemy fire to defend the camp, receiving several direct hits from enemy rounds to rescue several soldiers. By the end of the battle, he was hit 18 times. He was awarded the Medal of Honor in 2014. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we honor this American hero for his bravery and heroism. As you walk down the halls, know that you are leading the way to our veterans. Those like Command Sergeant Atkins, who once stood on the front line alongside a band of brothers for the freedom we enjoy today. It is now our turn to turn to protect and serve them. 174 men and women will call this place home. I want to encourage our community to come visit, to sit and listen to the stories, to find volunteers, opportunities, and help what is needed. Of the six neighborhoods inside, one in particular will be a dedicated memory care unit. When those residents may not remember their past, let us remind them. Many of you have heard stories upon stories about the greatest generation. The men and women who will live here are the ones who came after them and are often called the silent generation. Let us be their voice. Let us share their story. Let us be the one to endure. No one ever forgets the service and sacrifice of these brave men and women. May we show them compassionate care, dignity and honor, and a deep grit of gratitude. May God bless the veterans home, May God bless enterprise, and may God bless America. Thank you so much, Mayor Cooper. Mr. Mayor, did you ever think we'd get to this day? There were <laughs> seven years in the making. So thank you so much, sir. Next, I would like to welcome Mr. Scott Gettling, Vice Chairman of the Alabama State Board of Veterans Affairs to give remarks. Mr. Gettling. It's kind of funny listening to the mayor speak because the first words in my speech was, wow. <laughs> what a great day for the veterans of Alabama. It is truly a great day for the military veterans, but one that could not have been possible without the incredible efforts of a team. I was in the military, so that's why I use the word team. We talked about partnerships and all that today, and not everybody served. But I learned a long time ago, if you want to make sure that it's not individual credit, it's the work of a team, the collective effort for the greater good that makes us better. The team accomplished the mission through a collective effort, and that greater good being this Benny G. Atkins, Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins State Veterans Home. Many, many, and the, and the greater good is also those many, many veterans who are going to call this home. Because this is truly built for them and their families. Reaching the day ceremony has been a nearly seven year process. It required studies, contracts, funding, hard work, perseverance, commitment, and patience. But more than anything, it required teamwork. I want to first thank the part of the team that helped us overcome the first major obstacle when it came to the initial funding of this home. We weren't truly prepared for the surge in costs associated following what happened after COVID and the cost of goods and services and labor. The Department of Veterans Affairs, our federal legislators in Congress, and then our governor, Kay Ivey, her staff, many state agencies, along with our Alabama legislators, secured major additional funding for this project. With additional help and resources provided by the City of Enterprise, Coffee County, and their local team, we are back on mission with resources to make it happen. We are extremely grateful to everyone that put the funding obstacle behind us. Many more of the team, as I call them, kept the momentum going. Locally, the City of Enterprise and Coffee County have done everything we could possibly ask for. On the construction, other members of our team 
brought their A-game. We in the flat stop designed an incredible home. The Rayburn General Contractors brought that design to life. Now the doors opening next month, ACMR of Alabama will continue that dream as the Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs continues to service Alabama veterans. Then we have the Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs and the State Board of Veterans Affairs who have been extremely engaged in this mission from the very beginning and have been our rock throughout the entire process. I'd personally like to thank each of them for their efforts. Most of them are here today, some of them are not for health reasons, and then we have, we still have a mission going on to take care of Alabama veterans, and many of them are, are doing that mission today. I would also like to thank a special group, not only for their service and sacrifice to this great country, but for the way, work they do to make the lives of all our veterans' homes, residents, better. And that's our veteran service organizations and their members. They, along with several other organizations and individuals, do so much to brighten the day for our veterans. And I know for a fact they can't wait to get involved with this home. But let me give you a little history and timeline of this campaign and delivering the, Benny G. the Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins home to our Alabama veterans. It probably won't surprise you that a building a new state veterans home took six to seven years. This journey started in 2018 as Alabama State Veterans Home System, system consisting of four other homes had a very long waiting list of potential residents. Acknowledging that, the State Board of Veterans Affairs commissioned a feasibility study to determine two things. First, the study confirmed that Alabama indeed, indeed needed another state veterans home. And second, the region of the state that most needed that new home, the Wiregrass. Based on those results, on October 5th, 2018, the Board of Veterans Affairs formally voted to build a new veterans home. Let the competition begin throughout competitive bids. On January 3rd, 2020, the board selected this particular site of enterprise for the Fifth State Veterans Home. Later that same year, on October 15th, William Blackstock was chosen to design a new home. Leaping further ahead in time, on July 9th, 2021, the state board selected the name for this new home, which would honor a great American and a great, Al a great Alabama Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins. In May of 22, the State Board of Veterans Affairs selected Raven General Contractors to construct a new facility. About a month later, we held a groundbreaking ceremony and construction began the following day. As construction continued, the State Board selected HMR of Alabama uh, as a contractor to provide those health services. Then just later, just last month, the Alabama Depart Department of Veterans Affairs hired Samantha Wise to serve as the facility's first director. Today, as we celebrate the, the dedication of this incredible 182,000 square foot facility, remember how we got here. Take a moment, consider the veterans that it will serve. Along with the hundreds of community members who will work here. And just as importantly, reflect on the teamwork that got us this project and got it done. On time and on budget. Now, I know not everyone on this team is... Uh, Served in the Army, but can I get a big hoo from the audience for Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, Colonel Gedling. Uh, thank you for those kind remarks. And Ms. Toms, by the way, demanded equal time for Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, <laughs> Coast Guard, and Space Force. <laughs> so I take real pleasure in this next introduction. Um, I'm going to introduce Madam Assistant Secretary Zanetta Adams, Assistant Secretary of the United States Department of Veterans Affairs, to provide remarks on behalf of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. And this goes to the heart of that federal, state, and local partnership that I've talked about. I had the honor of meeting Deputy Assistant Secretary Adams, I guess about five years ago, when she was my counterpart in Michigan. She understands fully that local, state, federal partnership. So Deputy Assistant Secretary Adams, please join us. Thank you so much, and uh, I didn't have to go back. 
and say, Mayor Cooper, you're a pastor, right? <laughs> you, that sounded like a sermon, didn't it? <laughs> we all were inspired. So. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Um, so on behalf of myself and Secretary uh, Dennis McDonough, who couldn't be here today, I want to give a huge thanks to Governor Ivey, Senator Tuberville, the Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs, my friend Com Commissioner Kent Davis, the state legislature, VSOs, VA colleagues, friends, and all of those who are here to support our veterans and support this home. It takes a village to build a village, doesn't it? And with all of these combined efforts, you have what you see behind me. It's this beautiful home, which I cannot wait to go inside. What an exciting day as you open the fifth Alabama State Veterans Home. As you may know, VA works with the state to provide 65% funding to build this facility, VA per diem for the residents living there, and even grants to attract and retain skilled nurses. In fact, since 2022, we've awarded the Alabama Department of VA more than one million in skilled nursing grants to make sure that you have the right care and the right people with the right pay working in these homes for those veterans who deserve it most. As someone who, in my previous role as a state director of Veterans Affairs, briefly worked on opening a state veterans home, I understand the time, money, blood, sweat, and tears that go into building, opening, and running the state veterans home. So thank you to each and every person who had a hand in making this happen. Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins would be proud of this beautiful building that has his namesake. And I'm sure his family here today are proud of this building. And I know that we are at VA are proud of the partnership we have with Alabama on ensuring veterans have a beautiful, safe place to call home. As the number of veterans who qualify for state veterans homes is growing, we must continue to look for ways to serve them. A state veterans home is one of those ways. It's a place where veterans can find skilled care, camaraderie, and love. As a veteran myself, I may one day consider a state veterans home an option. That is, if one of my six children does not want me. <laughs> and that's good to know that when that day comes, if that day comes, I may have a place like this to call home. So congratulations to all of you, and I look forward to the tour. Thank you. So thank you so much, Madam Assistant Secretary. Next, I invite Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins' son, Dr. Keith Atkins, to the stage to give remarks on behalf of the entire Atkins family. Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, thanks to Commissioner Davis and Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs. Thank you to our hometown construction team, Rayburn Construction, for bringing Williams uh, Blackstock's vision to life. I'd like to thank Jack Hawkins, Chancellor Hawkins, who unfortunately couldn't make it today. Uh, I'm going to use this form to just speak to the support and the friendship he's provided for our family over the years. It's been greatly appreciated. Uh, we thank him for spearheading the effort to get this name this building dedicated uh, to my father. Uh, thank Senator Tuberville for being here today. Uh, not only our state senator, but a good family friend. We appreciate that. And I've been charged by Senator T Tuberville to keep this short and sweet, and I'll do that. <laughs> it's truly a great day, to, a great day for the state, a great day for our family. We're here today to honor a great man, my father, Benny Atkins. He was born in Oklahoma, South Oklahoma, Depression-era Oklahoma, to a large family of a poor cotton farmer. That family and that upbringing instilled the values that made him great. That is, values of family, hard work, accountability, and self-sacrifice. This allowed him to realize his own American dream. That is, he was drafted into the Army. Uh, there he met the love of his life. He was married to my mother for 60 plus years, raised a family, completed 22 and a half years of service to this country, half of which were during the Vietnam War. 
uh, deployed three times to Vietnam and multiple times elsewhere. Spent that career, and it's well documented. I'll briefly just discuss what happened after that. That's not as well documented. So he retired in 78, post-Vietnam War America, right in the middle of a recession. Came out and did like any good Green Beret, put his head down and did what he wanted. He went back to school at Troy University at night, earned a bachelor's degree. During the day, he was a substitute teacher anywhere in the Opelika City school system from third grade through high school. And I have some good stories about him breaking up fights in high school. I think he, <laughs> he continued to push education, not only with us, but with himself. He started his own accounting business, which he operated for more than 20 years. He continued going back to school at Troy University and eventually earned two master's degrees. All of this while still having three kids living at home. That wasn't enough, so he would give back, and he did that by teaching. He taught adult education, continuing education courses, GED courses, even taught GED courses in Lee County Jail. He wasn't there. He was just there. <laughs> So in 2014, after years of efforts from colleagues and friends, the Distinguished Service Cross that was awarded in 1966 was upgraded to the Medal of Honor. This allowed him to travel the U.S. and continue to speak about those values that uh, he held near and dear to his heart. So this, we're, we're talking about a gentleman who is well into his 80s now. I get a call one day, and he, he says, I want you to come over. I want to talk about something I want to do. So we, we went over, and what did he talk about? He said he wanted to give back. You know, I was like, Dad, you're 84 years old. You, you have physical issues. I think you've given enough. But he said, no, I want to give back. So what he did was he set up a nonprofit foundation to award educational scholarships to Green Beret soldiers like himself. It's a man that led a truly spectacular life, but a humble life. That was a word he used often, was humble. He didn't look for the spotlight and would often use humor, humor to deflect that spotlight. And I know if he were speaking today, he would have started out with a few jokes. So we are very honored as his family uh, for the dedication of his veterans' home to his name and his legacy. We hope that going forward, perhaps his story can inspire people to live that good life. Dedicate yourself. Sacrifice when necessary. Work hard. Be a good citizen. A good spouse. A good parent, as he did. Do this not looking for the spotlight, but because it's the right thing to do. Live your life as he did, in a humble way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Atkins, and just a couple of follow-up notes. So I woke up this morning, and I had an early morning text message from Dr. Jack Hawkins saying he apologized again due to a prior commitment that he couldn't be here. We knew he wasn't going to be able to attend. But he also said, please pass on his personal thanks to your family and congratulations on this momentous occasion. Secondly, I had the honor, as some in this audience did, of knowing Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Adkins. And I'm telling you, what a good and humble man. Just an incredible human being. When we go on the tours, I hope you'll take time to pause at the display to his life and I just take in that display and what it represents and what he gave to this country. Speaking of Medal of Honor recipients, it is my distinct privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Medal of Honor recipient, U.S. Army Captain Retired, Michael Rose. Born, born in Huntsville, Alabama, retired Captain Gary Mike Rose enlisted in the U.S. Army 
April 4th, 1967. He attended basic training at Fort Ord, California, and infantry advanced individual training at Fort Gordon, Georgia. After graduating from AIT, he was promoted to private first class and attended the U.S. Army Jump School at Fort Benning, Georgia. In October 1967, Rose began Special Forces training at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, graduating as a Special Forces medic and was assigned to the 7th Special Forces Group. In April 1969, Rose was assigned to the 46th Special Forces Company, headquartered at Lotbury, Thailand. Mike, did I say? Lotbury. Lotbury. In April 1970, Mike Rose was assigned to the Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, Studies and Observation Group, 5th Special Forces Group. While deployed in 1970, Mike Rose participated in Operation Tailwind, a covert operation from 11 to 14 September in Laos during the Vietnam War. Rose treated 60 to 70 wounded personnel for four days under nearly continuous enemy fire. For his actions during a four-day engagement, he was indeed awarded the Medal of Honor. In April 1971, Mike Rose attended the Spanish Language School at Anacostia in the Washington, D.C. area, then was assigned to the 8th Special Forces Group in Panama until August 1973. In August 1973 also, he was selected to attend Officer Candidate School at Fort Benning, Georgia. As some say, he became a zero like me when he became an officer. A 90-day wonder, there you go, Mike. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant in field artillery in December 1973 and attended field artillery officer basic course at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. In 1978, Mike Rose attended the field artillery officer advanced course followed by various field artillery assignments in Germany, New Mexico, Korea, and Fort Sill. He graduated in December 1977 with a Bachelor of Arts in General Education and Military Science from Cameron University in Lawton, Oklahoma, and a Master's of Arts in Communication from the University of Oklahoma in December 1989. Mike Rose retired from the U.S. Army in 1987. He then worked as an instructional designer, writing operator, user, and maintenance manuals, as well as designing training for the manufacturing industry. He permanently retired in 2010. He has been married to his wife, Margaret, since 1971. They have three adult children and two grandchildren. Michael Rose's military awards include, of course, the Medal of Honor, the Bronze Star Medal with one oak leaf cluster and a V device for valor, the Purple Heart with two oak leaf clusters, the Meritorious Service Medal, the Air Medal, the Army Achievement Medal, the Good Conduct Medal with two knots, the National Defense Service Medal, the Vietnam Campaign Medal with star, Presidential Unit Citation, the Vietnam Civic Action Honor Medal, Vietnam Campaign Medal, the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry Unit Citation with Palm Combat Medical Badge, Special Forces Tab, U.S. Army Parachute Badge, the Thai Army Parachute Badge, the Vietnam Parachute Badge, and several other service ribbons. And folks, you are not going to hear a list like that for a very, very long time in this country. So ladies and gentlemen, if you would please, in giving a warm welcome to Captain Mike Rose. Thank you. I had known that it takes a lot of people to develop something like this, but just listening to the speaker and, and the Admiral, that it, uh, it's just amazing. It just, it's mind-boggling that the thing you ever, ever got built with that many people and all the coordination. So for all of you who are involved with that, on behalf of myself and the Medal of Honor Society, I want to thank you for caring enough to get together to build a facility like this. I knew uh, Benny Atkins. 
he and i were involved in several projects surprisingly they all dealt with education either for veterans or for children especially with children with dr. walsh's youth leadership development program which now comprises something like thirty two universities and a hundred high schools in alabama and we have awarded almost two million dollars to scholarships and the main reason these kids get these scholarships we don't care about their sat score or their psa score we they have to demonstrate that they have the ability to do the academics but they get these scholarships based on the service they provided in the four years in the program and their character we don't care if their dad's a billionaire or as poor as a church mouse that is strictly on the individual and that's an example of the kinds of things that Benny Atkins was involved in uh, I can tell you talking to him over the years that I knew him some five six years I would believe uh, the man was just fascinating to listen to uh, somebody should have walked around and followed him around with a recorder uh, he really was a Reader's Digest character. Uh, some of the stuff he pulled, if you young people did today, I guarantee you your address would be something in Kansas. <laughs> uh, things like he's, he's been rumored to move an international border so that he could get aviation assets that weren't supposed to cross that border to go in and rescue fellow veterans, fellow, fellow soldiers. That was the kind of man he was. About this facility, I, I don't know how Benny would feel about it as far as it being named after him. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure his family would probably know more about that than I would. But I can tell you from my experience, he would be sitting way back in the, in the crowd. But he would be tickled. He would be enthralled the fact that this facility and all the effort that all of you have done here has been built and on a continuous basis you're going to take care of 174 veterans male and female and that's what he would have liked i don't i i can't say how he would like i said how he would feel about naming this facility but thinking of all the people i know in alabama there are many people that this facility could have been named after, but I can assure you that you could not find a better individual in the state of Alabama or on this planet to name this facility after. There's a quote that I kind of gives me inspiration at times from uh, Fleet Admiral Bull Halsey. He was the commander of U.S. forces at the Battle of Guadalcanal, and in October of 42, whether we were going to win or not was in question. And he made a statement to the fact that there are no great men. There are only ordinary men who do exceptional things. And that was Benny Atkins. But Benny Atkins, being an ordinary man, continuously on a daily basis did exceptional things. And for all of you here, you're ordinary individuals, but because you're here and you had some part, either emotionally or just supporting this in some way or other, you are exceptional individuals. You can take proud in that, that the people of the state of Alabama know that we owe a great debt to our veterans. And it, you know, if you look at our history, uh, I don't know if too many of you know of a gentleman by the name of Plum Martin. He joined the Army when George Washington was the Commander-in-Chief. He was at Boston and all the way to Yorktown and beyond. He rose to the rank of Sergeant. And on his tombstone, it said, a Soldier, of the revolution but at toward the end of his life he was benefited out by the federal government and i believe he received i think eight dollars a month which in 
the early 1800s, I guess that wasn't a bad chunk of change every month. But that shows you that this country has appreciated veterans since its existence. We have honored them from 1775 all the way to today. And this facility just doesn't honor and show respect to the people that will be residents here, but it also shows that the people of Alabama care about what these men and women have done. And if you think about it, most of them are somewhat under 25 when they go in. They go to places that, in my dad's case, he couldn't even pronounce the name of the place they were sending them to uh, in the Second World War. They, they have been away from their families and friends and their homes. They gave up their youth, and a lot of them come back somewhat injured, both either mentally or physically. That will remain with them the rest of their lives. But yet, for some reason, they get up, they dust themselves off, and they build roads, they build schools, they pay taxes. And that's the quintessential definition of a veteran. You learn to serve in the Army or the Navy, Coast Guard or Marines or Space Command, or did I, I think I missed one, Marine Corps. And, uh, Air Force. Oh, Air Force, that's not, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm losing track because I can only count to four, so. But the, what you do as veterans and family members as veterans, and it's just not the veteran that loses out. I know one individual, I had the privilege of knowing him. He was a prisoner of war during Vietnam. And he got to meet his son, his, old, his oldest son, when he was nine years old. So the price that the families pay, the price that the veteran pays is extraordinary. And so this facility is something that says to the world that the people of the state of Alabama care about our veterans and care about the things that they have done, the losses they have, and they do something about it. And this is number five. And God willing, there'll be six, seven, and eight, nine, and ten, or more. I cannot say any more about Benny Atkins, other than he wasn't an exceptional individual. He was someone that I felt personally privileged to stand in his presence, and I feel very privileged to stand up here and say a few words today in honor of Benny and all those veterans over the next however many years this place is here, will be taken care of. It'll be a safe place, a place where they can go to feel safe, that they'll be taken care of. They'll have something to eat. They'll be clean. There will be conversations, and I'm sure, like a bunch of us, like fishermen, you know, over the years, as somebody once said, the difference between a fairy tale and a war story is one says, once upon a time, and that's a fairy tale, and the war story is, there I was, slowly I turned. <laughs> but if you listen to these old gentlemen, and even in some cases young men, they have stories to tell that need to be known. And when people in this area drive by this, they see the name Benny Atkins and they see the facility. And maybe that young person's going to ask their mother or their dad, what is it? And that's a teaching moment for somebody who's young and doesn't know. That's a place where old veterans go when they need help. So God bless you for all that you've done. All of the people that have been involved in this, from the people who actually physically built it, through the plans, got the coordination done and all the other things that had to be done. You will have that 
when you stand before Peter, that will be on your side. It'll be on your scale, and it'll tip you in. And I'm sure Peter's going to say, come on in. And so I end this by saying, God bless the Republic of the United States. God bless the state of Alabama. And God bless the city of Enterprise. Thank you. Captain Rose, we've gotten quite used to his inspirational words. We had the honor last year he spoke to our Alabama Department of Veterans Affairs All Hands Conference, and our employees might still talk about that day that you came and visited with us. God bless you, and thanks so much. So everyone, today we're obviously at this dedication uh, ceremony. It's really not only dedicated to Command Sergeant Major Benny G. Atkins, but also to all of the men and women who have served in every branch of the U.S. Armed Forces. To honor those veterans, we will now play the service songs medley. If you are a veteran or a family member of a veteran, you may stand if you're able when you hear your service song played. No, we won't make you sing it, but <laughs> please stand when your service song is played. inevitable technical difficulties. We'll get it played in just a second. I told you to bring three. <laughs>
So I keep hitting on the theme of partnership, and it's not only that local, state, federal partnership that we rely on, but also the private sector as well, especially the wonderful nonprofits and veteran service organizations. And I have no doubt you're going to see an outpouring of volunteers for this facility when we start admitting the residents in just a few days. So to recap a little bit, I'd like to thank the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, the state of Alabama, the Enterprise City Council and the Coffee County Commission for their generous support in the construction and dedication of this wonderful facility, both financially and spiritually. It is because of the support from numerous organizations throughout the state that we can fulfill our promise to provide outstanding service to Alabama veterans. I'd like to ask Mr. Harry Sessaman with the Blue Star Salute Foundation to please join me on the stage for the first donation to the Benny G. Atkins State Veterans Home. And folks, we could not operate these homes without that wonderful support and the contributions that we get from organizations such as the Blue Star Salute Foundation. No, I, well, you don't mean thank you. <laughs> we may be we, here for a while now. Uh, on behalf of the Blue Star Salute Foundation, a statewide organization that helps our veterans, we're in tune with the organization, uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, to help all veterans, including those that are unable to care for themselves. And we want to say at this time as we make a small, very small donation, $3,750, to Admiral Davis, uh, because we are huge supporters of his, and he has led the way for this, and we are very proud of him uh, being where he's at. Thank you. So they just told me that our assistant commissioner, Jeff Newton, has the real check. Do we, do we Jeff? All right. Just wanted to make sure. I'd like to now invite Chaplain Moore to come back to the stage to give our benediction. Let's please rise. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, Thus shall you bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the Savior's name, amen. amen. Thanks so much, Chaplain Moore. You can please take your seats. There's just a little bit more. I promise we're in the home stretch. So bear with me. I used to be in logistics in the military. This is going to be a little bit of logistics. We're going to transition to photos and the ribbon cutting ceremony to officially open the new facility. Um, so we want to give a chance for group photos. So at this time we ask that members from the city of Enterprise and Coffee County come forward to have their photo taken at the entrance of the home right behind us here where the ribbon is. So if you're with the city of Enterprise or Coffee County officials, please join us over here and that includes all of the subsets of those um, municipalities.
So while they're taking their group photo, again, I want to formally thank the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, Mayor William Cooper and the City of Enterprise, the Industrial Board of Enterprise, the Coffee County Commission, Williams Blackstock Architects, Rayburn General Contractors, and of course the Blue Star Salute Foundation for their support and the assistance in the completion of this home. Ladies and gents, there's one group that I have not recognized, and this is important going forward. So by state law, we operate these homes under contract. And you heard a mention of this earlier, HMR of Alabama Incorporated was selected as the contractor for this home. So now that the construction is completed, we've started the transition where HMR will operate this home. If you're a member of the HMR team, please stand and be recognized. Thank you very much. And you're going to see many more HMR employees when we move inside for the tours and reception indoors. And please join us for that shortly. Next group. Okay, the next group for photos. Will all federal and state officials please come forward to have your photo taken at the entrance of the home? If you're a federal elected official, member of the federal executive branch, counterparts at the state level, please assemble over at the ribbon for a group photo. Okay, our next group for photo, if you're a member of Rayburn Contractors or Williams Blackstock Architects and Engineering, please come forward for a group photo over by the ribbon. Okay, our final group, and this is the official ribbon cutting. I would ask that any members of the State Board of Veterans Affairs and the Command Sergeant Major Adkins' children, Ms. Mary Ann Blake, Dr. Keith Adkins, and Michael Adkins, please come forward for a photo and the official ribbon cutting.
Thank you. 